there, CNCers. Scott here again for CNC Labs. We're going to make cookies. Right after we finish carving our custom rolling pin made on our wonderful Vortex. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about basic graphics and using them on rotary carvings. We're going to show you how to save rotary G-code files, and we are going to use the Vortex to rotary surface our square into a cylinder. Let's go! Some of my absolute favorite memories growing up were going to my grandma's house and making cookies with her and my brother and my two cousins. Uh, we'd go into the house and she'd have everything, you know, it smelled like cookies and the sprinkles and everything were out. Uh, and then the four boys would just turn this poor woman's house upside down because, you know, we were four little hooligans. Grandma was like a super special lady uh, and she would just sit back and laugh at us and roll with the punches. So when I got my Vortex, um, I know how much she would have loved to have her own custom rolling pin, so I'm kind of making this rolling pin in memory of Grandma so that you guys can enjoy Christmas the way that we used to. For my material, I'm using this wonderful block of maple. It's about 16 inches long by two and a quarter by two and a quarter. We are going to rotary surface it down later on so that is just under that mark and we have a wonderful cylinder. For the rotary surfacing I was just talking about, we're going to be using a quarter inch upcut end mill. For the rolling pin clearing pass, I'm going to use a 16th inch downcut end mill to remove the bulk of the material. To refine all the small little details in the design like the snowflakes and the antlers, I'm going to use a 30 degree V-bit and that's it for bits. Here we are over V-carve and we are going to run through a very quick file setup. Uh, there's nothing too crazy about it, but there is a few key differences uh, in rotary versus normal carving. So first thing you're going to do is create a new file. We are going to use rotary again. My length is, like I said, it's about 16 inches and my diameter after we rotary service is going to be 2.2 inches. So those are the file specifications that I'm putting in right now. Uh, it's not the actual material size, it's what I'm going to do after I rotary surface it, which we will do later on. My Z0 position is the cylinder axis, my XY is the bottom left, and my orientation is along X with flip design checked on, and you are going to hit OK. File setup, done. Super simple, super easy. We wanted to show you how super simple it was to create this rolling pin. So um, we're gonna go through with a design that has no handles on it. Now we're well aware that handles might make this easier, but um, we wanted to go very basic, very beginner so that you guys were comfortable and trying this new project out. So if you do wanna see us make a rolling pin with handles on it, let us know in the comments and we will be sure that we make a rolling pin with handles in the next one. For the actual design file, it is pretty crazy simple. You can find a graphic online you can create your own, um, download one that's already, you know, been created. We want to send a special thank you out to everybody who participated in the rolling pin subject matter poll that we put out on the socials a couple weeks ago. A Christmas scene was the winner, so that's what I'm going to go forward with on my design. And I, I downloaded a vector that was tileable from online. Um, I went in and I messed with the scale and the size and I rotated things and I deleted some things and I added some things. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, when I was all done that, I ended up with this wonderful looking finalized vector here. So you can't tell that it, you can see the tile in it now, um, but it's all put together. It's ready to go. The vectors are now done, but that was all it was. Um, I left a gap on both sides, left and right, so that the jaws of the chuck had a space to go in as well as clearance for the collet nut when it's carving near there. Um, so that's why there's some gaps at the edges. Um, and then again, the bits that I picked, I picked them specifically to get into um, some of these little tiny areas. Oh, I can't find my mouse. Where'd it go? There it goes. Um, you can see that these are some pretty small details. So that's what that 30 degree V bit did a really good job getting in there and finalizing. After that 16th inch end mill got in there and cleared out most of it. You may do a different design. And if you do, you may only need one bit. Uh, it, it's really dependent on what your design is and what you're you're looking to you know achieve with your rolling pin. For me, I needed, I wanted to do a bit of a clearing pass and I did the V bit to you know get in there and get all those details. So that's what that's all about. For this design, it's gonna be just like we did with the tombstone. We are going to have one set of vectors, but we're gonna have two different bits assigned to the same tool path. So one's going to be a clearing pass and one's going to be a detail pass. Um, and I'll just run really quickly through how to do that. I am going to select everything that I have. I used a pocket tool path for this. And you can see that my 16th inch end mill is already loaded in there. That's going to be the roughing pass or the clearing pass as it is. Uh, they're set at a 16th inch deep and my settings on this are 
Feeds and speeds, 75 and 60. Those were a little conservative. You can probably bump those up if you want to. We'll leave them at this for now just to make sure that we're not beating on that bit too badly. We're going to hit OK. From there, we are going to go to select, and this is now going to be our kind of detail pass. And you go down here and you'll select your 30 degree view. You'll select your 30 degree V bit or whichever V bit you're using for your particular design. It may not need to be so intricate as mine is. We're going to hit select and you'll see that it has added it in the tool list second. I'll show you my settings on that and 30 and 30. I think I bumped that way up when I was actually experimenting. I think my settings are saving from another file, but here we are. Uh, above a 16th pass, 150. Everything is good. We'll hit OK. And then we're going to hit Calculate. It's going to tell me that there's some open vectors. I've searched through my file. I can't find them, to be honest. And it hasn't affected the final carve, so I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> it's going to calculate. And you'll see down here in our tool paths that it has called one the clearing pass. So that will be the 16th inch end mill. And I can actually show you that right there. There we go. There's the 16th inch end mill. And if you go to the other pocket, it's got the 30 degree V bit in there. We are going to preview our tool paths, have a really good look at these when you're doing jobs like this. Um, because there was so much detail in my design, um, I wanted to make sure I could see it really clearly. So a little tip, if you go up here to this little, I don't even know what that looks like. It looks like a crepe, like a little pancake. And then you go to your preview and you hit do 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 preview selected tool path. You'll see that by default, it comes up wrapped around the cylinder. Sometimes that's great, but sometimes I just want to see the design laying flat so I can really get the details. So if you hit that, ta-da, it'll give you unwrapped view of your tool paths, which is really great because you can get in there and you don't have to worry about rotating around. So that's a fun little tip. Um, we're going to preview all tool paths. There we go. And you will see now that everything's in there, all my details are not missing. My snowflakes look good, my antlers are good. And that's where the clearing pass and the finish pass will really dial in your design and make it look sharp and snazzy. Once you're good with your design, you're happy with how everything is laid out and your bits are cutting what they're supposed to do. I'm just going to give these a quick rename so that I again remember what they are. My computer is really far away. So if I type something wrong, I apologize. I'm going to call this uh, what is this one? This is going to be the rolling pin and it's the 0.625 down cut. Boom. And that is the clear pass. That's why I, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to go to the second one and I know that this is my 30 degree V bit. So I'm going to call it the same thing. Rolling pin 30 V bit. And I'm actually going to give them some numbers just so that I run them in a proper order. I mean, you do you, but that's, uh, I like to make things as simple as possible for myself. There we go. Tool paths are named. You know what's what. You've got them labeled with your bits. And now all we have to do is the only difference between normal flat carving and rotary is that you are going to use a different post processor. And you can see right here, I have the Vortex A post processor as my option. That's what I'm going to select. If you haven't downloaded it, check the link in the description. We'll have it down there. You hit save tool path and I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call it X because that's what I did with the last project and it worked really well. <laughs> and I'm just going to hit save. Easy peasy. Do the same thing for your 30 degree V bit. Save tool path. It's already got rotary A saved. Save tool path. Tool paths are saved. V carve is now officially done. Alrighty, so before we rotary surface, we need to find the center point of either one end if you're using the chuck jaws or both ends if you're using the handy dandy little faceplate attachment. In my case, I am using the bigger set of jaws on the Vortex. They're the, the second set. So I only need to find an X on one end of mine. I'm going to do that hopefully painfully, less painfully than the first two times I tried to do this while recording. There's one and make it straight. There we go. I found my X. My tail stock will plug onto that. My jaws will go on the other end. Let's just do that right now. Apollo's good with that. Here we go. Do, 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 do. We'll close up the jaws. Do, do, do. There they go. Hungry, hungry hippos. Locked in there pretty good. I'll slide my tailstock over. We'll lock it down. I'll give this a whole bunch of spins because I really actually want this to support it very nicely. I did one where I didn't give that quite enough turns and I will be honest, it fell out and broke. We're set up to rotary surface a rolling pin. Now that we've got our design files done and our G-code files saved, we are going to run the rotary 
surfacing option in G-Sender. It's going to turn our square into a cylinder and it's going to round off our stock so that we can start actually carving in it. There are great resources on the Vortex website about rotary surfacing, so if you're not familiar with it, you can check out the link in the description below. It is pretty basic, pretty straightforward, so it doesn't take long and you will learn how to master it and turn your squares into cylinders. Rotary surfacing ready to go. We're gonna flick on the dust collector, the Makita, and let some wood chips fly. <laughs> Quick handy sanding tip for your Vortex. It's not gonna get out any heavy tooling marks that are in there, but it is a fun, quick way to, um, you know, knock down some of the stuff that is left over. Take a piece of sanding paper, cut it into a strip, crank up G-Sender to 10,000 on the A axis speed and let her rip. So I've got my rolling pin ends all chopped off nice and flush. Looks pretty good. You'd never even know there was a divot there. Uh, now I'm just going to use a sanding block with some 120 grit on it to get rid of some of the heavier tooling marks that are on this thing. And that'll come in at the end with probably some, you know, 150, 180, 220 and finish sanding it off. And uh, after that, we'll be ready to oil this thing up. That's it, ready for some oil. You're happy with your rolling pin. You've got it all sanded, smoothed out, chopped down to size. Now we're gonna finish it with some food safe uh, oil. Uh, to be honest, this might be a project that would be really good for like an oil bath. So if you had a, a, a bucket and you'd use, you know, like tongue oil or something like that, and you could submerge the whole thing. I, however, don't have any tongue oil. So I'm gonna go with, uh, we're not sponsored by these guys, but I really like this project it's called Ligna Bio Supra. And uh, very easy to work with. It's literally just kind of slathered on and then let it sit for a minute and then wipe it off with a clean rag. And uh, it cures, it seals the wood and it is really hardy. Uh, my kids haven't been able to destroy my coffee table that, or a bunch of tables that I've made with this stuff. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cover the sucker in oil, let it cure for you know a couple of days. It says it's, it's fully cured within uh, 24 hours, but um, we're gonna let it sit for a little while and then we'll go and bake some cookies with it. baking, think about how thrilled they would be to get their own custom rolling pin. We're talking like 
heirloom quality level stuff here, guys. And now that we've shown you just how easy it is to make them, you can carve a whole bunch more and have your friends and family baking right into the new year. Thanks for spending some time with us. We hope you liked the tutorial as always. We want to hear from you what you liked, what you didn't like. Engage with us. Talk with us. I'll even answer your comments personally, to be honest. Make sure you're liked and subscribed and following us on all the social media so that you don't miss out on any of the amazing content we have coming at you. Until the next one, we'll see you around the CNC. Okay, there's your ending.